Rock Sugar Magic is brought to you by Florida Boy, Inc. If you like Duck Dynasty or Swamp People, you'll love what Florida Boy has cooking up. It's Florida Boy, I-N-C, Florida Boy, Inc. on Instagram. Head over there and tell them we sent you. Welcome to Rock Sugar Magic, Kevin and Kane Churko. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. We're so excited to have you. Do you like our studio? <laughs> yeah, we do. But, but very, very nice. Well done. <laughs> Kevin's like, I didn't know this was going to be on film. <laughs> well, good thing I always look good. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> the candy's perfectly matching. Look at yeah. The I assume it's always going to be on film. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know you have like an obsession with, I was looking through your, your you know, social media and you have yeah. like wrestling as obsession. Yeah, I'm a big, big Big wrestling fan. I would, yeah, I would say it's an obsession. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're right. You exactly. walked in with. It was one of my questions was going to be about that, and you walk in with a shirt. With, yeah. <laughs> this is my new Brett the Hitman heart shirt. For sure. I actually, just got this one a couple days ago. I'm very proud of it. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Um, you guys are super producers. You've done some of the biggest, you know, bands in rock music, from Ozzy Osbourne to Five Finger Death Punch, Disturbed. I mean, like some amazing. But you don't just do rock. You do a lot of people like a lot of different genres um and there's you know definitely going to get into that but what i really want to know is father and son working together so closely what's that like and i want to hear about some of the things that you know work and don't work well, I'm I'm going to tell you that he really enjoys working with his dad his entire life. <laughs> and it's such a pleasure for him and a thrill for him. He couldn't imagine working with anybody else. <laughs> okay, done. Thank you both for coming in. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, some one of my clients asked me this the other day. They asked how, how many years have we actually been like uh, working on stuff, you know, like right. working together right. in some aspect in the in the studio, right? right? And really, about like over like 23 years, probably. Wow. Like I started, what was the first first one? Well, I think of it, for, I, for me. I remember. I, for me, I think of almost had to fire him. No, I'm just <laughs> well, for me, I think of it as I started using Pro Tools at fourteen and yeah. doing like real recording, let's say, and um, and by sixteen I was doing editing and stuff for you. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what the first first one. You don't was remember then. what the first paid job was? It wasn't technically for me. Was it? Brad Johnner? Tell it, me. It was working for Mutt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that, that might have actually came a little bit later. Oh, okay. That might have came, oh. like, like around the same time, though. Right. Around the same right. time. Right, right. For, for, for and sure. what was but, that? But, uh, and what job was that? Yeah, Sh- Shania Twain uh, DVD. Oh, Mutt Lang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mutt Lang a live about, yeah. uh, video. For, for about three, three, three weeks. Yeah. Uh, we were up in uh, a, ca- a cabin in the middle of uh, in the middle of nowhere in Ontario during a snowstorm. Oh, this is um, horrible. We had, after a few days or a couple days, I think we had no power. All the power went out. Um, we, we had a gas generator, so we used the gas generator to run all the Pro Tools rigs. But we had no power, no hot oh, water, no. Or, no power or, left for anything or else. Anything. <laughs> for, for pretty much like, I feel like it was most of that. But to be honest, I and mean, you had to fill the generator up with gas every day. And I couldn't trust anybody else because yeah. you were about 17 or something like that. Yeah. So every morning <laughs> early, I had to go out there with my gas can. Oh, my oh gosh. Thinking, okay, I'm going to be a big time audio engineer. And here I am with a gas, gas can. can. <laughs> <laughs> a generator snowing on, on, on. Were you freezing? Were you guys freezing doing this? Well, I mean, being Canadian by birth, I mean, for me, it wasn't that bad. I, I mean, it was I, cool. I remember us being wrapped in jackets and blankets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a cabin, not not on like studio <laughs> desks, just in makeshift situations. I think I was basically sitting on a lawn chair, you know, in, inside of my Pro Tools station while we, uh, yeah, while we work for, while we work for Mutt, who's obviously so incredibly brilliant, and yeah. uh, his work ethic was just amazing. I think I did my first twenty four hour session that that during those couple weeks, uh, where you working for twenty four hours. And wait, was Shania there freezing too? Uh, yeah, she, yeah. she was there, but she wasn't always in the studio with right, us. Right, right. But she you guys all had blankets on? with their own generator. Oh, okay. So. okay. <laughs> yeah. she, she probably had someone to fill the generator. Water, yeah. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't no, they're, they're we troopers were all there. You know, yeah. she's, she's Canadian. Yeah. So. And did, so, but you almost fired him. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I didn't okay, almost okay. fire him. <laughs> Have you ever come close to being like, calling it quits, working with each other? No. No. Wow. No, I mean, no, there's really been no drama. Yeah, it's it's truly is awesome and easy and... 
I think in that in that regard, like maybe our relationship sometimes is more like brother like when it comes to working together mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm the big brother. Um, yeah. Where we we very much like the kind smarter of, brother, you know, <laughs> the better looking brother. Yeah. We're, we're very much cut from the same cloth and yeah. share the same philosophies, and even if we have different ways of coming at things or different, uh, you know, be, be just different opinions about things, we always still kind of like appreciate the same end result and we still kind of ar- arrive there together and stuff so i th- i think he's right the, be- the, the the reason why i like it the most other than respecting what he does and the true talent that he has is that i do come from a much different place than him different upbringing like musically we like different music but at the same time we respect each other enough so that it still does come around to mm-hmm. a great zero point let's call what's it. the difference what kind yeah. of music do you like and what do you like you, you say what's what the you difference? Like more. <laughs> Where first. do you guys like meet and when you he's, just go like, oh, more, I don't get it? I mean, some of it's probably just generational yeah. stuff, too. Just he's a child of we, the 90s. What we grew up by proxy. Basically. But yeah, I mean, I love 90s stuff from, you know, alt- grunge, <laughs> alternative. I love, I love, you know, I love lots of things, hip hop stuff, electronic stuff, pop stuff. I've, I've probably always been more inclined to like um, catchier popular kinds of music than even uh, than even the kind of music uh, we make regularly um, and stuff. So so I'm always kind of trying to bring those elements into maybe what we do or more like the tr- more traditional rock side of things. How do I infuse? So you would bring you bring n- like a lot of grunge. It. Yeah, probably. What about some? Modern I think even this I'm less technical of a. I have less tech. You know, he had more traditional music lessons and and more more practice more. Uh, you know, he played in his family band and just uh, M- more musician. Let's say more musicianship, which yeah. maybe makes him come out. Or a not, little... not more musicianship, more uh, literal musicianship, or like school, school. He, he, he okay. can come at it with more understanding, more more theory, maybe a better sense of what he's actually doing. And I'm more just like, let me pick this up and make some noise with it and do something cool. Like what and, sounds and, good. And I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't mm. know what chord I'm playing, mm. and I don't know. You know, uh, what time signature I'm in or whatever. It's just, uh, so it's, I, I think it's maybe more that kind of attitude that to me is sort of a, an essence of the 90s. <laughs> what are some of your favorite bands? Um, I like everything from Sp- Spoon is one of my favorite bands. Uh, I love uh, anything Weezer, Radiohead, uh, Sneaker Pimps. Uh, I mean, I love Doja Cat. I love Megan Thee Stallion. That's I cool. Love, <laughs> those are some of my favorite records yeah, the last yeah, couple of yeah, years, yeah. years, too. Not what everyone wants to hear from me, usually, but <laughs> but but I love the, those records. And anything that's just exciting to listen to and, like, like I, I particularly love listening to things that I don't know how to do it. You Interesting. Know? Yeah. You know, like, like, I, like, not that I know how to make all rock music, but, but it's familiar to me. I can kind of visualize how it would be put together. So I like when I can hear something and be like, how how did they put that together? Or how, you know, That's I like when it's, And can you I figure like it out just by listening? Can you eventually I'll, figure it out? I'll, tr- I'll try to, yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. And, and that's something a lot of my, how I learned was just like, what what do I like? And then I have to figure out, okay, why do I like it? Right. And then and then you kind of categorize the the ingredients and the, the components that make it that. And you, then you try to put them into your own music, right? Mm, that's awesome. What about you, yeah. Kevin? Your bands? Uh, well, as Kane said, I had a much more sort of let's call it an educated upbringing. So, I did a lot of classical music as a as a piano player, and then eventually as a percussionist. So, you know, uh, some sometimes that's a little bit of a hurdle to be honest. And that's mm-hmm. why I like working with Kane because you know some of the greatest bands, the greatest artists of all time, didn't have any of that. Right. The Bee Gees couldn't write music. The Beatles couldn't write write music. You know, couldn't read and write it. They could yeah. just pick up an instrument figure it out, play it, and come up with, with the most amazing songs. But like Kane says, I can listen to music and I can go, okay, well, they used drum samples, they didn't use drum samples, they probably did the beds first, they didn't. They had the song written, they wrote the music to the track. So it's You not, can tell that by listening to a song. Well, I mean, you can't always tell it exactly, but most of the time, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, particularly if the music was done first. Yeah. You know, and mostly in rock music, as mm-hmm. you would know, a lot of times it's guitar player based. So he comes up with a badass riff, and everybody's got to work around that. Right, right, right. yeah. Particularly from the '70s, '80s, probably not '90s, but um, so you can kind of hear the riff happening, or you can hear the music behind it. And if the singer, if he's doing overlapping lines, and it's not like he was sitting there on the acoustic guitar singing it and has a chance to breathe, that was probably created after the track was was already done. Right, mm-hmm. and so right. that sometimes that's the easiest way of doing that. So to me, you know, it's not as intriguing to listen to something, even if I like the song, you know, that I kind of know how it was done. I'm much more 
you know, my mind's always going, I want to learn things all the time. And if there's nothing to learn, I'm on to the next thing. And, and right. you know what, if you're an expert in anything, like when I watch somebody ride a horse in, in the movies or television, I, it immediately takes me out of a scene if they can't ride. You know, right? and, like, and I'm constantly exactly. thinking, and I'm like, oh gosh, this is ruining the movie for me. <laughs> or, you know, whatever I am you know know something about, or radio, yeah. or anything, and I'm like, oh, you know? So I get that, if you're mm. listening to something, but also when, when I had to cut commercials together, analog, when I was in radio school, um, uh, we, we literally had to listen for breaths to make something sound natural. Because if there was not a breath or a room to breathe, you know, it's like, it's going to be a terrible, like it's going to not sound natural to the ear and people are not going to know why they don't like right. something yeah. and they'll turn you off. Yeah. So you got you to gotta make sure that it sounds natural and good. So it's funny to hear that in your world when you're listening to somebody sing and they're like, oh, they can't, they can't take a breath there. That's, put, that's not natural. It's not together. Yeah. I don't think people, you know, the, the layman hear that. Now, my question is, are yeah. you noticing as producers over the years that there's a decrease in the musicianship overall? Because like we're relying on a lot of technology and like in the past, people are kind of musicians, especially they were just they had to do it right. They had to rehearse it to the point when they go to the studio, they have one, two, three takes, they have to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's great. Our generation is a little more lazy, I have to say. Do you <laughs> noticing anything like that people come to the studio? Ah, it's good enough, you know, like just, you know, let's go to the next phrase. We can cut it, we can paste yeah. it. Well, I mean, first of all, just to be clear, I'll never judge. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, and, I, and, I, and I, don't, I don't judge because I just look at everything as evolving, right? Okay. There's no right or wrong, it's just, it, it changes. It has to change. Anything that doesn't change dies. Yeah. So. I'm okay with all these things, but yes, <laughs> I mean, okay. without a doubt, but that's just sort of the nature of, of the existing world right now. And I don't even blame the musicians for mm. it. You know, I mean, they have to shoulder some of that responsibility. If that's important to them to be good musicians, well, many of them aren't as good as what they would have been back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe not uh, 90s, but. Uh, I, would, I would even say, though, that there's, um, there's an aspect of there's you have, to, you have to focus on different things these days as a, as a musician to mm -hmm. just to make it and to and to break through and it's not just being great at your guitar anymore, right. um, you know. As as a kid, I didn't, I didn't know any guitar players that knew how to use a computer, and that, and now all the musicians I work with are programming and know how know how to build some version of a demo themselves, you know, and yeah. th and things like things like that. Um, aside from just like social media and all everything it takes to right, right, to right. you know be a be a brand and, and and all those kinds of things and i think um i think maybe where you know musicianship skills are are aren't as traditional as they used to be uh the artists nowadays and the average young person coming up is so much more awareness uh of everything else and i think that effort gets kind of spread amongst those things not, necess not necessarily less effort, but more things you have to spread that spread your effort across. And yeah. um, so, so you know, I think that's a bit of, you know, that's a cycle. I think we'll, we'll yeah. see. And n now there's, <clears throat> you know, guys that are almost computer programmers making songs. Yeah. Uh, where that, yeah. That, where that, do you that think that's going to gonna cool lead, things. like, in the future with this arrival of artificial intelligence, like a jet GPT. And I, I just heard that there yeah. was a producer yeah. that just created an artist that's actually not real. They just wrote everything in like with chat GPT, like lyrics, all of that. Um, what is your you know, it's, opinion about that? It's scary and exciting. I, I think we'll see, um, I think we'll see some people, uh, you know, you know we'll, we'll see, first we're gonna see people with AI replace, replace people. And before we see AI replace people, right? And so, so we'll see that stage. But I mean, it's exciting for me because I'm a producer. I like to make music with different voices, with different styles. Uh, the idea of being able to do my own tracks and then ha replace my voice with another voice, or you know, construct a, a virtual Black Eyed Peas or something like that. Yeah. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But virtual heavy metal Black Eyed Peas or something like that. Um, that's kind of fun and exciting. It's like I think of it like making movies. Like, oh, now there's an unlimited amount of movies we can make, you know. Whereas I'm sure some people would be like, oh, it's robots making music or yeah, something. Yeah, like I know. That. I'm but, scared. Well, I'm me. scared. Yeah, yeah. I'm scared. Yeah. As a musician, I'm just yeah. like. But that's where I think like people with it will always do better than just it. Than just it will on its own. And I think the people that figure out how to like use it like a tool, play it like an instrument, um, 
at least we'll be initially ahead of, ahead of the curve before the AI does it does I, it all in its own. I think it's heading that way, yeah. and I think I hopefully it'll be so. And and this is what my hope my hope is is that people get so sick of just robots and we go back to the human aspect of things yeah. in everything the emotions yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. yeah no, I, I, I would totally love love that i mean i i mean the, the way that we're different is i grew up in the tape-based recording days yeah. and he didn't yeah you know, and i transitioned and he didn't yeah but at the same time i'm a man that likes progress and likes to move forward and it'll be different yeah. and music will be different but when Eddie Van Halen could do hammer-ons through a Marshall, yeah. he did it. Yeah. He didn't just stick with his Vox and played B.B. King licks. Yeah. Nobody, you know, gave him a hard time for it. They all adjusted. Oh, now I can do this too. Right. You know, and it kept yeah. on going from that. When the Beatles could be in stereo instead of mono, they did that. Right. Yeah. They didn't say, I like music more when it was just mono and sounded like it was this, this big. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's scary, but I think it's necessary. And, um, you know, it'll be exciting. But I think to, to answer to give you an answer to what you're scared of. We've all, well, at least we have typed in lyrics into chat GPT or whatever, you know, the various tools are. I've written songs, or let's say I've asked AI to write me a song in the flavor of X band, one yeah. of my bands, let's say, X band in the theme of, of Y. And I get this three verse <laughs> chorus song back and I go, wow, that was like, Three seconds. I had to wait for that good? whole song. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. Good. Okay, good. And, and that's what good. I'm telling you good. is that it will be fast and it will be efficient, but then it's still only going to be whatever has been. Right. It will not be something new. Right. It will not be a new angle of a topic. It will, you know, at least from what I've seen so yeah. far. Maybe at some point that'll transition too. Uh, you know, I mean, the most scariest thing for me as working in this in this industry and having my whole life depend on it is probably what you've what he's told me he's forecasted and i correct me if i say your words wrong eventually it will just be us sitting at home with an app going hey blah 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 make me a song that sounds oh. like judas priest you know with Ooh, with, with, with like lana del rey hell. singing oh, about no, no, no. No. about no. love and it'll no, bring no. you a random new song, no one's I ever heard. And, and instead of buying the artist's songs, you'll buy their add-on pack so you can hear them sing any song you want. No, I, it, sound, it honestly Sounds makes me like <laughs> dystopian. Yeah, dystopian, dystopian horror film. for me. Yeah, yeah. personally, for, yeah, yeah, for me too. I really, I do like. I need, I need the emotion in the music. Yeah. Yeah. That's what moves me. Like I, I need that human be there to sing about their. Yeah pain and agony it's something that i relate to and yeah. i don't know people are getting a little maybe num number over yeah. the years they just got like they maybe they don't need that as much i do and yeah. i suffer yeah. when it's gone and if any kind of technology yeah. takes that away no and i i understand that i think everybody fundamentally kind of understands that and that's all that's our first reactions as as people and humans as it should be at the same time uh i don't think uh, artificial means lack of emotion because uh, even if you look at movies, you know how many of us have teared up watching a Marvel movie, and none of it's real. They're in front of a the only thing they're cartoon in front of a green screen with the actor's twenty year old face put, uh, put, put 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 on top of them, and we're like, wow, what an awesome moment when Princess Leia is young again and she's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Really, what's interesting, like for my brain, if they have the fights that are on green yeah. screen my brain somehow doesn't feel the gravity right, of right. it. Yeah. Then I watch For Terminator sure. 2 yes. yeah, yeah. from yes. the 80s yeah. <clears throat> when they're doing these fights, but they do it like in a way like they really look like machines and they do For it. Sure. So, and I feel the heaviness. My brain is like seeing it, like it's heavy. I, I see the machinery in yeah. it. Like watching the first Alien. Too. Yeah, oh, and that's, yeah. that to me was just like, that's so interesting. So I, and with the lack of the gravity, I don't get that rush of adrenaline when I watch mm -hmm. some of these green me too. screens. I can't, it actually annoys me. It's like cartoons. Kind of like, you know, it's cartoons. Whatever. So the Marvel yeah. stuff, yeah, you, you, it, it, they look real, yeah. but it's like I'm watching a cartoon. Yeah. And I don't like cartoons. So I, it's balance, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think. Finding yeah. the balance I, I, when I you don't so take too. away it, everything from like humans being part of it. And, and even right now, I'd never, I, I'd never use it in that way to like write a whole song and have my experiences yeah. are the yeah. same. Yeah, I, nor I, have I. It was just when testing. When I've tested it out, yeah. what, what would it be? <laughs> but, no, I want to hear what you, you know, can, have to say. Yeah, it's yeah, not, we're but, not judging but, either. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But the best ways I've used it so far is even if you've taken something you've written, like let's say you write eight random lines down and you're 
got just like a rough sketch of your story of your, what you want your song to be. And you could put it in and be like, okay, now make sure every line is nine syllables and that the rhyme scheme is consistent and suggest alternate lines for any yeah. line that doesn't oh. fit my rhyme scheme. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then it gives you, gives you 10 different versions and you go, okay, make it darker. And then it goes, oh. And, and, and then you go now replace you know ferocious with whatever and you know and 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 wow. and, hey. and it's and it's like working with a calculator <laughs> totally. but I'm working through my own ideas and my own inspiration but it's able to curate it and kind of do the math of it faster than I can this sitting is in great. front you of you know what I've learned table. that we're gonna make her album at home and we're gonna be like we need something a little like Rammstein and Ghost with some, some more melodic stuff a little more like pop right in there boom give us yeah. a song and then you're gonna say hey Chat Chubby even came up with the name for the band did he came up with your name yeah no totally. her band is called Chromadora so I'm like what did yeah, it totally, really totally yeah, okay was... so let me just to correct this whole conversation <laughs> You're scared of AI and like <laughs> organicness, but let AI create your name. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. I, what I feel. That's all we need to know. <laughs> we came up with some cool no, names no, no. when we were driving to Vegas, listening to Slipknot for four hours. I'm like, what about this one? What about that one? What about... Uh, and, and then what did I yeah. come up with? I came up with a good one. Sculpture or something. No, it was like, yeah. I don't know, something cool. The point is like, using it as a tool yeah. is great. Yeah. But I'm afraid, yeah. like when it takes over, or if it takes yeah. over, it's like that when it when will. the when the humans stop yeah. making the music, that's that's the danger, or that's like what's like oh that would like the, my, my heart would break. They'll still make it. Happens. It'll just be yeah. like boutique art, and you'll have to find a guy that does it. <laughs> oh gosh! And, and it will cost a lot of money to, 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 <laughs> yeah. to hear to hear to hear a real song. Oh versus, lord! Versus the, you, no. the you'll have a category in Spotify, <laughs> non AI music, AI music, and it. My guess is it probably like vintage, a vintage clothing or vintage records, whatever. It will be make the the pre twenty twenty four music more valuable to yeah. both play Maybe. and have because there will be less of it because yeah. people will not be able. Just like when Pro Tools came came about, there's very few artists who have not made a record either with some kind of. Daw, Pro Tools, Logic, whatever. Since that time, I mean, people will say they recorded onto tape. You know, and maybe they have, but even that Foo, Foo Fighters album that they championed with tape and all organic analog, they still use Pro Tools in the recording of that. So, you know, it'll be the same thing. Is that you know, you 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 just can't move back. You just can't go back in time. And this will have to be too. Hopefully, we we use it wisely. Like when drum machines first came about, at first they replaced drummers, then it became an, an additional tool that people use. Now they still kind of replace drummers in a sense, but you know, or string machines keyboards, all that kind of stuff. It just has to be something that naturally evolves. You know, not yeah. to mention yeah. that we're already in a simulation anyway, so what difference does <laughs> yeah. it make? Hey, I, I, I totally agree with you 100% <laughs> totally on that. We would agree. That is our, that is yeah. that's how we think. Yeah. That's a different um, conversation. Totally. That's a total, and that's a good one. Hold yeah. on, wait a second. Let's go Let's into go that. Let's go in there. Yeah. <laughs> what is your simulation like? Is it like the Matrix? That I'm existing in? Yes. In this dimension? That's right. <laughs> at this time portal? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it like to you? What what reality what, what, is that? Is that for you? Like how? Mock that up for me. Like where do you see it? Is like we are in a program. We are. I mean, I have so many different thoughts on that, which I love. Right. Yeah. Give me yours. Um, let me give you the edited version. Of mine. <laughs> I believe dude, this is a lot to talk about publicly. That it's okay. I'll tell you. My will will all sound crazy, right? Oh, let's yeah. just okay, let's just make it. Crazy. No, no, go for it. Uh, you know, I th I think, you know, this is all always an understanding and progress. This is always an education because you evolve in any kind of idea of what exists in your world from the time you're a kid until now, and even by next year we have another another version of this podcast. I may have discovered some some different things, but right now I would have to say. I'm probably in one of, of many simulations and many divergent paths, all moving at the same time or without time, happening all at once. And this is the one right now that I'm choosing to acknowledge and to be in mm -hmm. and to, uh, to experience. And I have the power at any point in time to change it. Right. So I'm going to change the things I want to change and hang on to the things I don't want to change. I love that. I, I I absolutely love you have that viewpoint. My, mine is way, way out there, like way out okay, there. I'll good. give you a super edited version awesome. too. Um, I mean, super, super edited. I do believe that we can, 
Yeah, this is going to sound really crazy. Um, I do believe that we do have, if you want to call them dimensions, that we can go into in different places and pe the lives we've lived, right? And we can go into them. Um, some people call it the like Akashic or Kashic records, right? You can go and look it up right. and kind of go into one, right? Go into, many people call it different things. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's like you've you've lived, you're living now, right? But we've lived so many lives before, right? So many, I believe this. Like my dad grew up Druze, D-R-U-Z-E, yeah. Druze. Do very much like Buddhist and believing mm -hmm. in reincarnation, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, there are children who come back and they know their last life. They know their name, they know where they live, they know, and they have this on, they've now done t several documentaries on children who remember everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that when we come back, your memory's erased. Some of us have some of it, some of us don't, right. and you can remember. Some people can remember many lives, right? right? Yeah. So you can you go back into those lives, like if you wanted to, probably, and you know relive them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if it's in, in present time you're reliving them or actually just going back and watching a videotape, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I think there's many different dimensions. I go way down. This is mm -hmm. so just literally scratching the surface of what I believe, because yeah. if we did a show like that, people would be like, okay, she's nuts. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Yeah. But there's a very interesting is the Mandela effect, if you heard, if you heard about it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, right? the Mandela that's effect, That's very, yes. very, very fascinating. Explain that to people, because, like, yeah. It, well, it's uh, certain names and certain movies, certain products that there's 60% that will tell you that it's always it always looked certain way or it was pronounced certain way. And then the other 40% say that it's never been like that. It was completely the other way. So basically, like we are not agreeing on certain reality and about yeah. certain things because yeah. we like the Berenstein Bears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, the Berenstein, the Berenstein, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. It's, it's Berenstein. Yeah, and see, it's we spelled said, stain, but everyone always thinks it's usually Berenstein. Yeah, it was the Berenstein Bear. I grew up yeah. with the Berenstein yeah. Bears. It's the Berenstein Bears. It's, 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 Bears? it's, it's, it's like A I N. Or something. Okay, that's you know, so it's, weird. It's oh not, yeah, it's so weird. Like that. I feel like I've seen it. I feel like I've seen it on the books. I've seen it in the show. I feel like I remember the jingle that way and and everything like that and. And it's just many that's, people. Yeah, like it's yeah, that's so weird. You see, and it's there. It's so real to them. That's yeah. what it is. And they're arguing about yeah. it. It's like, no. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's very reality is. I, mean, I don't want to say like subjective, but it is. And I mean, you we have to have a consensus on what reality is for the most part, right? Otherwise, we'd all be nuts. So hence the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It is because it is. It keeps us. I think not using our abilities as much as we can. Yeah, we have to agree on some kind of, let's call it a mediocre playing field that everybody can subscribe to and right. say, yeah, we understand what you, what you mean, yeah. right? And that's just the way that humanity exists, mm -hmm. that we have to be able to connect with people. And how can we connect to people if we all have a different version of what's true? So, you know, and some of us find different. Yeah. Versions yeah, of right. what's true. Like yeah. what you're saying is true to you. Yeah. You know, and I somewhat agree with pretty much everything you said. <laughs> but at the same time, there would be lots of people that we can you can invite on your podcast. They don't have a reality industry, with that. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. agree with that. No, you know? absolutely and that's not. Okay. That's and that's just totally their version fine. of their truth. Yeah. Hundred percent. But that, I can understand that. Like there are people who have absolutely different views from me that are so different. As long as you tell me in a respectful way, I'll listen to anything you have to say, even if I don't agree or believe with it. Mm -hmm. Believe it, right? But we've as as I love a, it. Yeah, I mean the crazier the better. For I, the I love it. <laughs> I like, but I like. I can even the artists I work with, I love the crazy people the most. I mean, they're the most talented. They're I want to know gifted. the stuff I don't know yet. You know? Yeah, 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 I wanna, yeah. I want to yeah, yeah. know the theories I've never thought about, and yeah. you know whether whether they're challenging or different or exciting or scary or or, or whatever. I mean, yeah. I. Leave no stone unturned kind yeah, of thing, right? Yeah, I yeah. love that. I love to hear different people's opinions. I love to hear about different religions. I like to hear about what people's like realities are. I yeah. think it's super cool. I'm super interested in people, you know? I like to know what their thoughts are. Yeah. And then take on that perspective and go, hmm, that's an interesting way to live or an interesting way to look at things, you know? Yeah. And some I can take and go, wow, that's yeah. that's kind of cool. Yeah. I like I like that way of thinking, yeah. right? And, and a lot of times those little small truths that you take from someone who you otherwise think is totally nuts, yeah. that becomes a small <laughs> seed that will grow into another True. kind of plant or flower. But yeah. you need it to kind of get to the crazy in order to find find that. Yeah, right? totally. You know, it's interesting. Kane and I are going to the Middle East here this fall in about a month. 
And so we're we're all about about the Druze and and Wait, where the are you Templars going? and everything. Uh, this time around, we're going to uh, Israel, Jordan, and Istanbul. Oh, oh wonderful. gosh! Yeah, I, yeah I, I, oh, that's amazing. I love Jordan. Jordan's one of my most favorite places on we're earth. We're really excited. Cool, to go yeah. there, yeah. you guys going to Petra? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Um, we I went to the Dead Sea there. We went to. Um, it oh, seems gosh, like unlimited it things to do and see there. Right? So. Yeah beautiful yeah. it's so beautiful there. and the people list. are amazing i gotta go to istanbul with all the cats and yeah. the horses yeah. gotta see that and then yeah. cappadocia like yeah. um is that is that yeah yeah cappadocia is um in in turkey um but yeah so i i i love that i love traveling i like seeing different you know ways that people live in countries and it's one of my most favorite things and i like they always say oh you're not you're not your true sign cancer right you're supposed to be a homebody with kids and stuff i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> I'm not married, don't have kids, <laughs> want to travel, you know, I'm like so adventurous. It just depends if we think the astrological cycle is off by a month or not. That's it, and it is. They say it is, right? Here they we say go like, again. They by, say our, the by, earth is by the, shifted. By the Vedic astrology. Or the <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's true. It's like, what kind of, what, what, you know, what, what signs do you believe in? You know, I look, there's always a little bit of truth here and there. It's Absolutely. cool, but you can yeah. change anything. And I like yeah. that thought is like, if you don't believe that you've created the good with the bad, and, and whether you believe in God or your angels or your guides, or, or if, if you believe that you're the one in, in, in charge, which I believe you are, and then y you get some help, but I take responsibility. It's the one thing I've learned, and it was a big lesson, probably one of the biggest lessons I've ever learned. I would always say, well, this is why this happened, or that person did that, or that person did this, or what, you know, I take responsibility for everything everything that is created good and bad and then you can change it because if you don't take responsibility you're not in charge and you can't change anything yeah. and my god i've literally i'm living the last when i i had lyme disease for 11 years the last three two and a half years that i've i've gotten rid of my lyme i've had that like mindset and i've done everything i've wanted to do That's awesome. everything that's great. Yeah, and I it's feel like, like clapping. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, but it's literally like it's not, a, not many it's people a can battle that. Can battle Lyme. No, she's battling it pretty bad. Oh no. Yeah, that's you know we uh, we had a we had some shows set. Is that how you guys met? Or how did yeah, you? yeah, yeah, that's, that's how we yeah. met. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 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 she was. That, um, that's a pretty unreal thing to share. I was pretty much. Friends. I was on my. Yeah. I, I was on my deathbed. Yeah. Wow. Like last year. Well, let's much. hear that story. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let us interview you. We've done shows We've on done this, it. but we'll We've give them an edit. Yeah. I don't like to talk about myself, uh, but um, that's how we met. That's yeah. how we met. Like she, she really gave me tools because she healed after eleven years, um, and she used to do what I've been doing. Like she would be working, but her first thing that she could think about would be go back to bed and yep. just rest because the body really cannot take much. It's really the nervous system and the immune system are, mm. is so exhausted. They're so exhausted that it just, you just cannot really function like normal people. Mm. Um, and I was after four years, first time on the tour this spring, actually. It was the first time in four so, years she got to tour, but she yeah. was with like wow. Trans Siberian Orchestra. Well, and right. yeah, right, right. and she just like, when I, I met her in 2015, we weren't, we didn't become friends, but we had, you know, mutual friends and right. stuff. She laughed at a joke I told, and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> it's heavy. And I saw her uh, a few years later and just running in the same group of friends. And then I saw her again th th almost a year ago. And she looked like death. Yeah. And um, I'm like, no, she tried everything, spent tens of thousands of dollars. If not, you know, you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on trying to get better from Lyme. And I had tried so many things that didn't work or that would make you better for a little bit. And then, like, you go crashing down again. Every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's wow. what. And so I said, you're coming with me. She lives in London. And she was out here for treatments. And we were in Florida. And I said, you're going to come live with me until you're better. I don't care, you know, she's like, I just don't even have money and in for the treatments. Meantime, yeah. We decided we're just, you know, we so, had, we had so much like great talks, like and like yeah. the, the, the weird ones and the crazy ones. Yeah. And I'm a nerd when it comes to music. Like I just like I can talk hours and hours and hours. I was so grateful I find another I find another girl that's like willing to do that. It's usually guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh so that's where like, you know, we should maybe start a podcast together and just like so we can have all these crazy talks. And then the music always in it, and wow. yeah, that's, it's, it's amazing that's how, how rock sugar magic actually. It's amazing how that happened. could all work in a way where like you end up meeting 
uh, you know, one of your best friends and they're yep. one of your best friends ends up, you know, maybe saving your life and you guys end up doing something awesome together. That's beautiful. Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah, and it's and been amazing. It was it's a been, it was it was very interesting cuz for me it was like a it was like a prayer that kind of worked cuz I remember the day we've met, I was doing these treatments for Lyme four months, uh, hours a day, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, nothing was working and I was just going worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. I look like a corpse and I'm like, this is it, I'm done. I think I'm done. And I have my own kind of like relationship with God. I, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian or Catholic, but like I, I love to like talk to some something. Because um, I, I see like something is, or I feel like something is watching over me my, my whole life, um, and that that was pretty much the the, the evidence. That Those can be exercised later. Yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're called demons. Kidding, <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And, um, so, but whatever works, oh, demons, yeah. angels. And uh, I just said I was just yeah. like I, I don't know um, what's going to happen, but I, I never met anyone that healed from Lyme disease. Like, what is the the encouragement in here to keep going like i've like this is it like I'm, I'm kind of done like god i really need you to send me someone that will that healed that that give me give me some motivation give me some some will to continue mm -hmm. um and so i remember that i just went to take a little nap i woke up to her text actually and she says hey i saw you around here um look like do you, you want to go and hang out? Yeah. What are you doing? I just like, I'm like, hey, I'm here in, at the clinic, Lyme disease clinic. I'm trying to do these treatments. And she says, I had it for 11 years. I'm completely healed. And she'd never heard that before. And wow. she literally was crying. I'm going to tell She's like, you I'm how done. to do it. Yeah. I'm going to help now you. Now we I'm have like, to hear that part of that story. Yeah, well, you have to <laughs> listen to our podcast. <laughs> right. I have a question because like you guys are also songwriters. Right. Yes. You write, so you write together. Is it like a... Like uh, when when it comes to that process, do you ever know really, hundred percent, you wrote a hit song, or is it? Is there? I'm sure there probably was many times uh, when you guys wrote something like this is gonna be a hit, and then maybe didn't <laughs> hit the audience yeah. the way. No, like I'm really a, interested. That's like a great how, question. Yeah, how yeah that I mean, works. and I've asked people that question. Yeah, too. it's a great you know, question. Better, better people mm -hmm. than me. I mean, I don't. You know, I, I think if I went by every time I, I would have guessed and or felt like, hey, this is going to be a hit song, I, I would say the answer is no. You don't really ever know. If I'm, if I'm going by the math of, you know, all my, all my guesses versus versus uh, the actual numbers coming back in. But um, there's there's times where something feels particularly magical, particularly just exciting and fresh in a different way. And you kind of, you can, even before anyone else outside the bubble you're in with the artists, each other, etc., you can just feel like, something's about to burst here in a big way something you know this track feels special um particularly even if you've worked with that person a bunch of times and you've done a bunch of stuff and you kind of have this context for what's usual versus like ooh, this is like just outside that this is yeah. this is the good stuff uh, mm -hmm. so i think you get those moments but but you don't always know and there's definitely times where you think something's uh going to be a single and isn't. There's times where there's something you don't think is going to be a single that, that is. Uh, or, you know, even when you're in the process itself, there's you don't always try to write a hit song every single time. I mean, a lot of the time, most of the time you do, or you're, you, you want to know you have that, let's say. But when you're making a record, you know, you know, you have more liberty to get more artistic with the whole picture. So, you know, if you know you already got three or four good potential radio singles on the record and you still got seven more songs to write, well, then you can have a little more fun and be yeah. like, Let's, yeah. we don't have to worry about it being this because we got we, we got this. And then you do the really exciting stuff. And sometimes you end up doing your real single once you kind of throw the book away. Um, you know, once you say, hey, let's just write a let's write the bonus track right now. And then you end up writing the single. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's just it's a game you play with yourself. And I don't think you can ever really think you can do it every time or have it every time. And I always kind of liken what we do maybe a little bit to like just being like an athlete and you is know. there like a pattern, like a like a way to do it? It's like let's write a hit song. Like what a, what that would be? Like how da would you guys? David Campbell says there is an actual technology to writing a hit song. I mean, he's got yeah. fifty Grammys, right? I'm like, well, what, well, what is that? What is it's what is probably that? secret? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think there's a collection of, of tr a collection of useful tricks, both tried and true, uh, as well as playing a game of calculated risk to an extent. Um, 
you know, you might know what can spice something up, and so let me just try to keep spicing all the things I can spice up until it's as spiced out as it can, <laughs> as it can be. Uh, how would you, what, how would you yeah, say? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to plan it out, I would have to say that I would agree with that person that there's tried and true ways, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, you don't have to be limited to that. Bohemian Rhapsody uh, fulfills none of those. Right, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Hotel true. California fulfills none of those tricks. How long is that guitar solo? How many guitar solos do we have? But everyone's amazing, right? So, but at the same time, you know, I used to have this guy at, at my uh, friend of ours at our studio. Uh, I'll even say his name, Nick Bling, or maybe you had the book. You had the book of, uh, was, what was it called? How to Write Hit Songs? I was about to say that, but let me guess. <laughs> <laughs> so bad, yeah. and, and most hit songs are in the key of C. Oh, really? Which is a female key. Yeah. Which maybe that's because they can sing along to them better so that they, you know, they're more engaged. They play them more because they can sing along as they drive or whatever. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Not that every girl sings along and just <laughs> But, um, you know, so there's those kind of ideas, you know, which change throughout time. In the 70s, you could have a third verse. Sabbath could have that yeah. third or fourth verse. Mm -hmm. You know, um, The Sound of Silence is just, mm. I think, six verses right. without a chorus. Yeah. yeah. Is that a hit song? Does that fulfill yeah. any of the things in that yeah. book? Uh, and uh, not in the key of C. Yeah. It, so yeah. it's like the key yeah. really is, to, to, to me anyway, that you want to capture the right emotion and you want to be able to keep people's attention with that emo and, and keep them focused on that emotion. Yeah. Um, and you could, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, even though it doesn't satisfy like traditional rules, it captures the right emotion and it keeps your attention. And even though it's however many, six, seven minutes or whatever, um, it still does that because it's interesting, it's dynamic, it goes different places, it makes you go like, wait, what's going on yeah. here all of a sudden? Yeah. Oh, now I'm back here. Oh, what? you know, and you go on that, you're st stuck on the ride and you like the ride. Um, I don't think every song needs to be three minutes to keep people's attention as if it's a really, really good song. So, you know, but it gets harder to do that when you have a seven minute song, you yeah. know, so, so right, it's, right. if everyone brought a seven minute song, they're not, you know, it's gonna, we're not gonna be able to figure out how to make them all probably the magical yeah. Bohemian, rap, Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody. And we're the first people to cut that seven minute song <laughs> down to a shot. I love it. I love it. It's not important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not important. Nobody cares. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, so we're not always loved because of that. Right. But if you're bringing in Bohemian Rhapsody, that's a different conversation. Sure. Or sure. you've got Freddie. But Freddie would you Mercury. know if you had Bohemian Rhapsody? Uh, would you know that? Or would you try and cut it first? I, I would not think you always know. And sometimes yeah. it's a test of wills, and sometimes uh, it's a test of. I, I would think of, we would know we, it's something we'd have to explore. Okay. Yeah. And it's something yeah. we'd have to try to bring to life. Like okay. if, if I heard you know, Freddie's rough demo or whatever it would have been of that, it'd be like, I want to go down this rabbit hole and, yeah. I, want, and I want to see this movie. That's cool. And, and Let's make sure we have We Will Rock You. And, and but a lot then of yeah, also yeah, 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 and those yeah, are the most yeah. exciting things. I mean, I mean, the, the most boring thing is when you're like, "All oh, right, I already know what this is gonna be, and I already know what I gotta do to do it, and we're just gonna boom, boom, boom. All right, flip the burger if I can serve it. You know, like, the, like not that it's that. You know, most of the time you do but, that. I never but, do that. But, but, but there's, there's times where it's just you know, you, you you know what chart it has to live on. You know what other bands it has to live around. Yeah. And, you know what's out. Side that zone and what's in that zone and what can pull it in and what can also make it stand out and you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But but the best thing is when it's you're just going on the ride and you're just having fun and you're just uh, doing what you do because you love it yeah. with people you enjoy. Yeah, doing what they love too with them and helping them and uh, you know not just writing songs but really helping people uh, achieve their dreams and yeah. and build better lives for themselves and. Uh, spread better messages to other people and you know like I, I like to even think of it bigger than just than even just the craft of the what work. will radio 101 yeah, take yeah, yeah 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 and you know we're talking about the, the creative side of things being in the business as long as at least i have 20 years longer than him the other side of it is no one says it's a hit until the label likes it the manager likes right. it the lead singer likes it because he's got to go sell it all those people have to put time and money money into it. So that's the oddly enough the wonderful thing about AI and Spotify, Spotify's version of AI, or not just Spotify, all the streaming streaming services. When the algorithm starts kicking in, it could be an album track that starts taking off that I knew was gonna be a big song and nobody gave it the time of day, but the artist knows or the producer knows. Right. But you can't convince the powers that be to push it. They in the old days they can stop that. Yeah. You know, because you have 
everything goes out on a 40, 45. Like they, we're talking the really old days now. And whereas now, you release that album to the world and it's always, that's the thing I love the most is when a song that's a non-focused song, not a street track, not a single, nothing that, not a video. And all of a sudden you see that song stats start going yeah. up and up and up. And sometimes it takes a matter of years if there's no input into mm -hmm. it. Even on In This Moment song called Horror, which was, it was a single, but it was third single. Nobody put any money in, into it. Rough title, radio wouldn't play it. Nobody wanted it. I mean, it's probably one of my most consistent growing songs in my catalog. Wow. wow. Every quarter I get a publishing check, I look at that, who's playing that? Why, wow. wh why is it getting more and more plays? You know, and I, there's a few songs in my catalog that, that, that I knew at the time, I said, these are, these are freaking great songs. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, bad title, too long, all those typical, th all those kind of things that we're talking about, the guidelines of active rock radio, they prevent it from, from getting, a, uh, you know, a chance. But people give it a chance in the end because if they listen to an artist and they start to yeah. repeat it, the algorithm picks it up, starts playing it, starts feeding it to people a little more in different ways. And if they start liking it, they start, you know, picking it up. And all of a sudden, and it's, for some songs, it's taken years. Yeah. I've had arguments with bands 10 years ago. This is a great song. This should be the one you put your attention into. And they don't. They'll put their attention to other singles. And over time, you know, I don't know which way this is going to work. But <laughs> the album track starts moving up because people put it onto playlists. They play wow. it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. every, and particularly, with say, with pop songs, it's probably even tougher because, you know, pop songs have a, a shorter life than a rock song would. People are still listening to Back in Black as many times as they right. probably listened to it when, when, when it was first, first out. Right. You know, you can take the number one song of that year and it's probably yeah. nobody's listening to it. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Repeatability. You can, have a, yeah. you can have a really awesome pop song, but you're fatigued after you've heard it three times. Yeah, it's true. And, 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 and you maybe don't feel like after the year you even need to hear it again for a few years or, or, or whatever. Even if you're like, it's great, I love it. It gets me hyped. I love working at the gym at, you know, whatever. Yes. You know, music first serves a big function in our lives. But, uh, but, but, yeah, but yeah, I mean, there's something to, I think, those songs that you just keep going back to and back to and back to. And th then the other people go back to and cover and karaoke. I always, I always think of like, you know, can I write songs that people are going to want to karaoke? Because yeah. that's a good song. Yeah, <laughs> it's someone, true. That's my favorite thing to do, by <laughs> the way. If someone's going to want to yeah. sing it for the rest of the time, you know, <laughs> yes. and can sing it, I always yes. ask myself, can someone karaoke this way? Yes. Like, <laughs> I you know. love that you think that way. It's like I'm karaoke. The one Just thing, karaoke that's queen. it. That's all I want to do. <laughs> like my, the oh, most my fun God. I can have is, is, you know, on a night out, is let's go karaoke. We'll have yeah. to do um, that. But yeah, we let's do it. If you want to do it, I'm down for tonight. I'm not even kidding you. <laughs> oh, and you like are we're in going. Trouble. We're going. You are in you tell me like karaoke, it's done. <laughs> she, You're gonna be like, hey, we're, um, we're gonna go karaoke. She makes like, it sound like she gives you like you can decide about this. You're already in. Yeah, no, no, you're already <laughs> decided. <laughs> we, have, we have karaoke so much at our our house that oh. <laughs> I've discussed with the wife of putting in like a flown PA <laughs> with a dedicated screen so really? people can be facing. It's facing the, the right way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, there's a there's a place here uh, in Vegas called GoGo -Go Karaoke. They have two screens, mm. so you, oh, you can go either or. It's so, the best. Yeah. Decent sound system. Sometimes the mics suck, but whatever. It's <laughs> yeah. the best. So we go there, and it's um. So if you guys want to go, yeah, you're the well, open for invitation. Tonight, we, we can't go. I think we have other plans. Right? No, but but I'm sure the family would be into it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. We, so we, we, we will we, definitely. We've all, do it. We, we we all went from never karaoke at all. A couple I'd years ago, any I of us, it. any of us ever, to like <laughs> all six of us, in, you know, in the in, in the in the like in the family, just loving it, and we it's a regular thing yeah. now. And we, you we, and me, we, we actually have together. together. Yeah, you got, yeah <laughs> she'll, well, she'll get up and sing, which is like for you. Yeah, yeah she will sing for me, but then nobody else wants to sing afterward. They're like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's the good news about karaoke with us. Yeah, We're yeah. not that good. We yeah. don't care. Like, I don't care if you are yeah. tone deaf. Yeah. Yeah. It's about having fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's about getting up there and like getting yeah. other people up and dancing yeah. and like oh, yeah. all of us singing. And it's just so, I don't know, I just, I love that. And What's your song? It makes me happy. My go to songs. The one that, if oh, I'm, I don't even know that one. And then you get up there and you kill <laughs> If I'm in voice, if I actually can sing, because when I had Lyme disease, it, it was. Oh my God, am I am I going to be on pitch or not? I couldn't stay on pitch with Lyme, so I if, can't stay on pitch. Period. So. Yeah, well, um, yeah. So I do anything like from Les Misérables, and I I love 
musical theater. I grew up doing musical mm-hmm. theater. So anything musical theater, but Les Miserables is like my favorite and Eponine, anything she sings. Oh, uh, Slipknot, baby. Slipknot. Then I yeah. go to Slipknot mm-hmm. and then I go to... The Devil um, and I. The Devil, yeah. Because they don't do a lot of Slipknot. <laughs> I mean, people are shit, but no. Um, I, we do, and I make her do like Vermillion with me and we, I, whatever Slipknot songs that are that are available, I will do. <laughs> and then I end up ruining my my voice at the end of the night with System of a Down, Chop Suey. So that's, wow. yeah. I'd like to see that. That'd be it's, a fun one. It's, yeah. And then we've done Rammstein, but uh, my German is terrible. She can do more German. She can speak a lot more German. She thinks because she's American. <laughs> no, but you can. You can. I mean, so so and oh god, yeah, Rammstein. That's like yeah, that's like my my favorite. But um. And so what's yours then? <sighs> ghost. Do I do? No, what you do love I do? Ghost. No, 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 but, but for it um, does for yeah, karaoke. For karaoke, I sing like Heart, like Alone, oh, okay. Barracuda, right? Some yeah. of that stuff. Right. Um, yeah. And then dream I, theater. And then, and then I just dream do, theater. I, I actually do backup vocals for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I the do. The harmonies. It's like that. Someone that yeah, yeah, yeah. can do that. Yeah. 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 But you do dream theater. He, he does yeah. that too. I'll be singing. Yeah. All of a sudden, a harmony will pop in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she does Iron Maiden really well. You do Iron Maiden very well. Maybe Trooper. Yeah, with Trooper. DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we did um, Trooper. Yeah, lots of rock. Lots of rock. Um, okay, so we got to wrap this up, but I, I yeah. want... We didn't even talk about rock. I know, <laughs> because we wanted to just get to know you okay. guys, because everything on the internet right now is you two talking about producing and how to like right. how, how, how to you know produce drums and, and mix drums. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. And then you guys are talking about like, you know, different... It's, it's all music with you guys, which is amazing. You guys are super producers, but... I wanted to get to know you and like what what we never got to your favorite bands. Tell me your favorite bands. Um, you know, I'm I'm not going to take a pass on this, but I'm going to say that I don't have favorite bands as much as I have favorite songs. What did you grow up listening? to? I never grew up with a jean jacket and writing in ACDC oh, you or, did. or I did. Jewish Priest or anything. You'll- okay, a couple of it, bands you grew up with then that you really uh, liked. I mean, so when I was growing up, it was obviously a child of the 80s uh so it was just after sabbath in a sense but ozzy so yeah. my earliest rock big moments were like ozzy ozzy moments uh so you know obviously the obvious songs like crazy train i mean i'm not sure. going to say these are my favorite songs but that's kind of my lineage then van halen was huge sure you know that whole time period uh so that's kind of what i that's my early days and most people you know will always gravitate towards their earliest when they first start to learn how to play sure whether it's you know music drums guitar so that's kind of which is what makes me a good rock producer now is kind of those those time periods but because i have wide and diverse interests i'm just as liable to put on a chet baker who's a jazz guy a track you know trumpet trumpet player or or a chopin just piano alone like that's my best way to just relax and I, and I think these days in the last 20 years, because that's, you know, for the longest time, that's all I do 12 to 16 hours a day. Rock, 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 mm-hmm. rock, 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 rock. By the time I get home, I just want to relax right. and vibe out yeah. and get mm-hmm. a glass of wine, put on some Chet Baker or something, some other kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be bebop jazz, but, you know, something mellower. Yeah. He, he listens to more Nora Jones than anyone I've ever that's met. That's awesome. Like. That's, that's awesome. And we, after listening to really heavy stuff, we will put on classical. Yeah. yeah. And she will hear, like, that's where they took this. Do you hear this? This sounds just like, you know, Ghost or Slipknot or, or yeah. you know, whatever we listen to. Bring yeah. me the horizon. And you look at, they took it from here. And I mean, we It's will, amazing when you find those moments in classical. It's, and oh, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. I, I, I've i yeah. never heard that. Yeah. She turned me on to that. And so we'll listen to classical. And he's like, this is a riff that they play. I'm like, yeah. oh, the Mozart, gosh. some of the yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like yeah, there's so much. The 40th. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. pure metal, just, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Classical is so related to metal, at least at the start of it. You know, that it's all, I mean, from Yngwie, Yngwie Malmsteen, yeah, Alms, who was yeah. from my era, yeah. too. I mean, my brother used to record those records on to reel to reel, slowed down to half speed so he could learn every little little guitar lick, oh, right? that's awesome. So, you know, I'm well-versed in all those things, but at the same time, I look at music, you know, like Hayne was talking about, like, like movies, and I just don't, I just don't go see westerns. I love westerns, but I'm going to see sci-fi, I'm going to see a chick flick, I'm going to see black sure. and white. I'm going to see, you know, all these different things because I just love movies in general and I love music in general too. So I'm just as likely to put on Hotel California, which is, I'll go on record saying that's one of my favorite all-time songs. As I would put on that versus like another, like more uh, country Americana art- artist like Steve, Steve Earle. Sure. I'd put on a Steve Earle song too, like right after that back to back. And one of our greatest times as a family at night, you know, if we're hanging out, is that, you know, we'll go on our Sono system and everybody gets to put a song in. 
And so, you know, you just get in the queue. So that those nights could go from a Merle Haggard song to a Wilco song to a uh, Miley Cyrus song I love to that. anything. That's you know? a fun night. Mm-hmm. That's We do that. We'll it, listen to it, music, it, yeah. And a lot of time, we, sometimes we'll have, to, we'll have to explain or say why we played it or yeah. say why we chose yeah, it or, or what we like that. about it or, yeah. you know. And, and like then that. we give veto power. If two people veto it, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you're put, if, if I put on a seven minute prog, prog rock song, a UK song or a yes song, the wife's vetoing that immediately. <laughs> As yeah, is probably like, my daughter Chloe. That's, so. like, that's like me with like with Tribulation and, and, um, with, and OPEF and everything. Yeah, yeah they're like, yeah, what? Yeah, what is this? Veto. I'm like, listen to this. Yeah. Listen yeah. Um, we got to wrap it up. You guys are yeah. awesome. Next time, we're going to bring Chloe in here to give us the dirt on you guys because that's it's your daughter, yep. your sister. And that's the first thing you said is, oh, we should have brought Chloe. She can tell you everything about us that we won't tell you. I'm like, okay, next time. <laughs> we'll also have to yeah. authorize it. And yeah. it. <laughs> we'll have to go through the list of what she can and can't do. <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to have her in here alone then. Well, that's dangerous. No, well, thank, thank you guys thank you so for coming. much. All right. Well, thank yeah. you for inviting us. Yeah, and good good luck. Here, and thank you. It's an exciting time for you and I love yeah. the name. Thank Kasem you. Casem and Gun. <laughs> yeah, Casem and Gun. It's Rock Sugar Magic and then Casem and Gun. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did the Casem awesome. and Gun and then we're doing the the actual like title underneath was Rock Sugar Magic. And so we did we we then put up a survey and we're like, do you guys like Rock Sugar Magic first or Casem and Gun first? Everybody picked Rock Sugar Magic. So. Really? Yeah, well, well, most. Not everybody. Most. I would have totally chosen Case and the Gun. Oh. <laughs> but I love it anyway. Yeah, awesome. well, we, yeah, we're rock, still rock Case and the Gun. Yeah, too. Yeah. 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 All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Rock Sugar Magic is brought to you by Florida Boy, Inc. If you like Duck Dynasty or Swamp People, you'll love what Florida Boy has cooking up. It's Florida Boy, I-N-C. Florida Boy, Inc. on Instagram. Head over there and tell them we sent you.